each Malcolm would come up and scrape the barn. And what we got is a 30 inch pipe that lays in the end of the barn. And it starts at four and a half foot up there and ends at six foot deep down there. So there's a one, I think a one and a half percent slope. So that way it's just all gravity fed right into the little pit. And then in turn, you know, like it's pumped over to the big storage. So yeah, before we did the manure pit, the big uh, manure pit, we used to, we got a 56,000 gallon pit here. We used to have to spread every 11 days. And it just got so hard to do, especially in the winter and the spring when it's wet. All that stuff. So that's was the big reason for doing the big, the, the big manure pit is because that just got too hard. And we go in and cut up our fields and we're strictly no-till and you know we didn't, didn't like cut the fields up. So that was the that was the big reason for the new manure pit. But yeah, we set a pump up right here and just come up with a spreader and back right in. I think it takes us a minute and a half to load the spreader and we're off. Uh, this is our manure pit. We put this in probably 1990, I think, 91, somewhere in there. Uh, we used to have a stacking area slash manure pit. It was, uh, it was a nightmare. And about the same area. Um, and it was a big mess, huge mess. Um, a lot of issues with manure runoff down down the hill and so dad uh, went ahead and started I think this was probably the first project that we did uh, with the Bradford County Conservation District and I'd say there's pros and cons to both we do both <laughs> so there is pros and cons to both um, if you're gonna do the, the more solid manure um, you're gonna be spreading more throughout the year uh, you just it's just another chore that you have to do uh, and you've always kind of got that issue you know it's like if it's really cold you got to get the tractor going got to get the manure spreader going so i would say that's a con to having the solid manure um, the pro to having the solid manure you don't have a hopper to plug up uh, you don't have to to rent well unless no you probably don't have to rent a big liquid manure spreader unless you own it um, or, or hire somebody to spread it because you can do it yourself pretty easily. <clears throat> a huge pro to the liquid manure is it goes out the pipe. Every morning I run the manure out while I'm milking cows and, and it does it all itself. As long as I get the manure into the drop, it goes out and comes out here and I don't have to look at it again until probably about July. Uh, and another huge pro to the, to the liquid manure system is um, it's usually Especially for our setup, we have two guys that are spreading, myself and our neighbor. And our neighbor has a really big manure spreader, and we rent a 4,000 gallon manure spreader. So we can have it all done in two days. I'm talking a pretty big volume of manure, but you can, if you time it right, you can get it on your fields at the perfect time in between first and second or second and third and get a really good cutting of hay for that next. And that worked out really well for us this year. We put it on after our second cutting while it was still dry and then we got a lot of rain and our third cutting was really really good so you can time things a little bit better then you're getting a little bit better use of your nutrients i think when you really need it which is a good thing to have on an organic farm yeah, this is where our hopper is uh, for anybody who's put in a manure pit and has a hopper you know the trouble that that can be but um, we've learned how to maintain that properly and try to, to keep keep the manure flowing through it and what not to be putting in it and so that we don't have issues with it as much as we used to. So that's kind of a big learning curve. All gravity flow, yeah, no pumps or anything like that. We got cost share money to help with the pit, the underground storage, and we built a facility that would suit our needs uh, to house all of our animals, all the way from weaning, all the way up to bred heifers. Uh, and put this whole project together with the conservation district, like I said, in 2003. Uh, it's, it's been fantastic for us. We've been able to get our heifers out of the watershed, retain all of our nutri nutrients here. We have a 12-foot deep pit underneath that holds about eight months of storage, which gives us flexibility. Uh, I couldn't be happier with it. All of our no. milkhouse waste goes into this heifer barn, which is over 300 gallons a day. So we have massive amounts of water in there, and that's what really makes it work. And we pump out 
of the center lid, right where the skid steer is. That's where we do all of our pumping. But every fall, I will go in each end and agitate and stir it and loosen that up. But most of it will come right towards us in the center. We can get 90% of it every single time right out of the center, as long as we have liquids. Well, liquid manure is by far and away the most efficient way to handle, handle manure. Uh, the bucket loading process of dry manure uh, is very inefficient. With that said, you got to be able to control the water. You can't have excess amount of water. Uh, we have a 12 inch piston pump underneath the barn cleaner, pumps it out into the middle. This is on a slope, gradual slope all the way down 14 feet deep at the back. It's an acorn monster manure transfer pump. Uh, we are on our second power unit since 1977. I think our fourth pump. Uh, absolutely something that you don't want to have to have, but we have to, we don't have gravity. Gravity is ideal. If you can get gravity flow into your pet, it's, it's perfect. But you do what works for your system and every farm's different.